Hi, Brother Prater. Welcome to my page. I was sharing with someone my testimony, and they were held by it, and I feel the need to share it with you all. And this is for those who may be trying to find a purpose or feel like they're stuck. They don't know what to do. Those that know me all my life, I wanted to be a professional wrestler. I grow myself, plan for many things for me to do as a professional wrestler. And then, 92, 1992, I had this little voice come to me and say, I don't want you to wrestle. I got other plans for you. So I just thought that maybe it was just paranoia. Maybe it was just fear that the devil was trying to throw in. So I just dismissed it. And then the next year, 93, well, the same voice came back and said, well, um, I don't want you to wrestle. I have other plans for you. Then I realized it was God. And God began to start explaining to me why specifically he didn't want me to wrestle. And so it was like God and I at a poker table. And I listened to everything that God said. And I said, okay. I got all my poker chips and said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to wrestle. I'm going to trust God with my plans. So I got all my poker chips and pushed it over to God. And I said, okay, I won't wrestle. Now, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And God got all the poker chips and said, okay, I'll get back with you and walked off. He didn't say nothing else to me. And I'm like, Lord, what am I supposed to do? Well, I had already put in two applications for employment. The first place was TCI Cable Company. And I've been wanting to work there for a long time because you get free cable and half off on pay-per-views. That way I can get pay-per-view wrestling half off strategy. And so, <coughs> I and also I applied for the Dallas County Sheriff's Department. But I was really trying to work at T-Shop Cable Company. <clears throat> well, I went on and every Wednesday at nine, between 9 and 10 a.m., I would go up there from Dallas to over there by Big Town. That's about a 30-minute drive. I drove there every Wednesday morning for six months, filling out an application. Attention, David Snow. Filling out an application. Attention, David Snow. So I did that consistently. Matter of fact, I went there so much that the receptionist at the front would say, wasn't you here last week? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm here to apply again just in case somebody died or got fired or something, you know. And so she would just laugh. So I would go up there so much. So every time I would walk in through the door, she didn't say anything much except for just give me another application. So I did that every Wednesday for six months. And so... Months later, one Friday, I ended up getting two letters in the mail. The first one was TCI Cable Company, and the second one was the Dallas County Sheriff's Department. Well, of course, I got the TCI Cable Company. Opened it up, and I went to my sister's room, and I read it, and it told me that, well, I was unqualified for the job. And I'm like, What? I don't have no criminal record. I don't have no bad driving record. Why? I was so hurt. I was so hurt, so disappointed. It was like my whole world just crashed because I had that in mind. That was going to help me to, to get my wrestling license. Well, the sheriff's department letter, I didn't even touch it because I felt like if TCI Cable Company wasn't going to hire me, I know the sheriff's department not going to hire me. So I got both of those letters and threw them in the trash. And I was just, I was just hurt. But all of a sudden, I just began to start getting this feeling. I need to go in the trash can, get the one for the Dallas Sheriff's Department, open up the letter and read it. And I was like, no, I'm tired of disappointments. I'm tired of disappointments. Well, eventually that stayed in the trash can for about 40, maybe 45 minutes. And so God told me, I need to learn to face my fears. <sighs> so I said, okay, okay. I went on, dug the trash can, and I got that letter from the Dallas County Sheriff's Department. And I opened it up, 
went back to my sister room, opened it up. To my surprise, it said that they wanted me to come in for the interview. Really? I mean, think about it. It was like what I really wanted. I didn't get the job. And I just knew that that place that didn't accept me, I knew that the sheriff department wasn't going to hire me. But they ended up asking me to come in for an interview. So it was like, it's like getting dumped and all of a sudden, bam, you get a phone call and somebody want to date you and there's somebody that's like a superstar. You know, you're like, wow, you know. And so long story short, I end up going through the interviews and all that stuff. And I end up getting hired on at the Dallas County Sheriff Department. A year later, that company that didn't hire me, t Cable Company, they went out of business. Okay, so God was showing me that what I was choosing, it wasn't going to work out. That wasn't his plan for me. But he never told me what he wanted me to do. So, let's say, you know, that was like, 95 maybe 96 uh, and then the wrestling the wrestling company i wanted to work for world championship wrestling wcw with sting and uh the steiner brothers well oh don't forget ron simmons well they end up getting bought out in 2001 they end up getting bought out by wwe wwf vince mcmahon in other words they went out of business and I was like, wow. So it was like all the choices that I had already planned, all the choices I had already chose for my life, God was showing me, boop, they were failing. But he never told me what he wanted me to do. And so long story short, uh, 2013, I ended up meeting my one of my favorite wrestlers, my top four favorite wrestlers, Sting. That's a, that's a story within itself. The next year, I end up meeting my childhood hero, Kevin Von Erich. I end up meeting him at the event on Father's Day weekend. Well, long story short, that night I went to sleep and I told you that God came to me and we were like at a poker table where that scene came back. And he told me, matter of fact, I'm, I'm forgetting the detail. One second. <clears throat> that same day, I ended up meeting Kevin Von Erich. Afterwards, I ended up talking to a wrestler. <clears throat> I ended up talking to a wrestler that was from uh, another country. <clears throat> and I, I was talking to him. I said, man, I just met my childhood hero, Kevin Von Erich. And blah, blah, blah. You know, just started talking to him. And uh, he said, wow. He said, well, uh. You know, you said you wanted to wrestle. Well, it ain't too late for you. You can go ahead and wrestle. I said, no, nah, man. And at the, I, I forgot what age I was. But I said, no, nah, I'm over 40. He said, really? He said, I thought you were my age. And so he told me what his age was. I was like, man, I thought that you were my age. And uh, he said, well, why, why don't you go ahead and you know, just wrestle? I said, well, no. Nah. I said, I'm a father. Uh, I'm a full-time employee. I'm, I'm now working in law enforcement, but also... I'm a minister and I have a lot of ministries. He said, you're a minister? He said, I want you to pray for me right now. Now get this. This was a world-class wrestler. Someone that's been around the world. And God allowed me to have a moment with him and he asked me to pray for him. And I was like, yeah, of course. That fan part closed up. That minister part kicked in. And so I began to minister to him, and, and that was only God that did that. And so later that night, God came back just like he came to me when he first told me, you know, i get back with you. Well, he got back with me, and that was 23 years later, somewhere 23 or 27 years later, he came back to me, and he said, I did not want you to wrestle. It's not that I did not want you to get into the wrestling world, but he said, I did not want you to be a professional wrestler. I wanted you to be a chaplain to the wrestlers or to the other entertainers that may be quote unquote, what some people call 
celebrities. And I said, oh, he said, see, oftentimes people look at these celebrities and fan out. But you have to understand that they're only in entertaining when they're on stage. But when they off stage, they're a human being just like you and I. They are in they may be entertainers, but they're there to entertain. But they still need a savior. They still go through life struggles. Sometimes they go through things worse because they don't trust people. And so God began to start showing me these things, and I was like, oh wow. And I felt so honored, so privileged that God trusted me. And with that, there's been many other people in my life that God has allowed me to minister to. Some, you know, not known, some well known. But in the midst of that, God showed me also the purpose of me being not at TCI Cable Company, but at Dallas County Sheriff's Department. God was showing me that that was for me. That was a spiritual boot camp for me to learn how to deal with people. Not just dealing with people just in ordinary life, but also how to deal with people because sometimes a lot of people have been misused by some church people. And so <clears throat> God was telling me <clears throat> he had me to work in the jailhouse to prepare me for the church house. I said, wow. So now, here I am, looking at my calendar. Now here I am, 57 days away from being eligible to retire. It was only God that allowed me to be even this long at my job, this long. But this has definitely been an, a development for me. Not just for those who God allowed me to minister to, but even those other people have ministered to me. God has ministered to me and many other people have ministered to me and helped me along the way. So I want to encourage you just in case you asking God for your purpose. First of all, don't ever feel that it's too late. The key thing you have to do is ask God to help you to have the ability to hear, but also the ability to see. Because sometimes we get so cloudy in our mind that we don't hear. So sometimes God will allow things to be in our physical senses to be able to catch our eyes for us to be able to see within the spirit of what God trying to do. So the main thing you have to do is consult God. Trust God. In other words, if you give God all your chips, all your spiritual chips, all your emotional chips, I promise you, that is a sure bet that you will not lose. That is a guarantee. Thousand percent, one percent, thousand percent, whatever you want to call it. Foolproof bet or investment that you will not lose. God told you that you can't beat him giving. And not just pertaining to finances, but even pertaining to trust level in your life. So God will give you not only what you desire, but beyond your wildest dreams. But you have to trust God in every area of your life. Don't be afraid to give God everything. Because I promise you, his return is good. God don't give no balance checks. But I want to encourage you. Whatever you're doing right now, if you feel like, like I said, you don't know what you're going to do. Like I said, you consult God, you ask God to help you and to reveal his move, his flow. Write stuff down. Write things down. When you talk to God, write stuff down. Sometimes you may have to record yourself. But also, the key thing what you have to do also, it's a lot of key things. But also make sure that you center yourself around people. That's not going to have you just be lazy. Make sure you have people around you that's going to motivate you. Have people around you that's, you, that's of the same mindset. Someone that's going to, well, you know, well, you know, it, 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 it don't take all of that. No, you don't need them kind of people. You don't need the kind of people, well, you know, well, uh, 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 you know, you got this problem. You got the issue. Oh, I don't, I don't see you doing that. Uh-uh. 
when you have people around you that don't see you doing what God called you to do, stay away from them. Don't give them information. Don't, and you may love them. Some of them may be someone that you might have grown up with. Or you might be some kin folks, but you can love them. You can respect them, but you don't have to give them things that's going to discourage you. You don't have time to be discouraged. You need to be encouraged and empowered. And the only one that's going to give you that is Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you just in case you were lost, you were uncertain before you saw this video. God allowed you to see this video for a reason. Now the question is, what are you going to do about it? Let us pray. The Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. Thank you, Lord, for your awesomeness. We come to you right now, God, we acknowledge your presence on today. We come to you right now, God, there are those right now, God, that may be asking you, God, what purpose or what plan you have for them right now, God. God, we speak, God, that you reveal right now, God. God, we speak right now, God, that you help them, God, to get into a quiet place to hear from you, God, and to see your moves, see your waves, see your flow, see your rhythm right now in the name of Jesus. God, we speak right now, God, that you remove every distractiveness right now, God. In the name of Jesus, in the hindrance right now, God. In the name of Jesus, anything that can be blinding them or deafening them from the flow of your spirit right now, God. From your voice, God. From your leading right now, God. In the name of Jesus. And we bind everything the devil stands for. We counsel the devil's assignment right now. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for revelation, God. We thank you, Lord, for not only for us to be able to uh, uh, trust you, but God, even for you to trust us, God. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege, for the honor, God, that you have given us in this assignment right now. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we speak right now, God, that there's a testimony that comes from this right now, God. God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we speak right now, God. Anything that may even uh, uh, promote generational curse right now, God, we cast down to the pits of hell right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now, God, for the testimony coming from this, God. We thank you, Lord, for moving the mountains and right now, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, even for if we trust you right now, God. We know, God, you will not fail us right now, God. In the name of Jesus, and Lord, we speak, God, that you direct our path and make every crooked path straight right now. In the name of Jesus and we give you the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> I thank you for watching this video and I pray that it ministers to you. Be blessed.